Okay, um, I know most we've got a fairly small audience now, but I would nonetheless like to take this opportunity to thank all of the volunteers, the room monitors, the AV for today. It's been it's been a good mini conf, um, and hopefully we'll get plenty of people to you know submit talks to it next year, and it'll be even more awesomer. Um, assuming it happens, hopefully it will. Um, is there anything else I needed to mention? I don't think so. Cool. Um, and also, I need to thank all my speakers as well. Yes, that was the thing that I was forgetting. Because the speakers, that, that was some of those talks. Wow. I'm, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It's been awesome. So uh, now you get to listen to me rant about OpenStreetMap for about 40 minutes, depending on how quickly I go through it. Uh, this is a talk that I've given uh, twice before, once in short form at Software Freedom Day a couple of years ago, and uh, once again in its full form at uh, the Open Source Developers Conference in Hobart last October. Um, the video for that's already online if you want to preempt me and go, go and watch it. Um, but um, you could also just kind of watch me here. This is all good. Um, so this is a talk about OpenStreetMap. Uh, OpenStreetMap, I think, is... Uh, underappreciated by a lot of people. In a similar way to the Internet Archive, you know that it's a thing for the most part, but you don't really appreciate all the cool stuff you can do with it. Um, so a little quick recap about who I am. Uh, this isn't quite up to date anymore because I don't work where I used to work. Um, but I'm a computer scientist. I play with Linuxy stuff. I used to work for this company called CyberIT up until last Friday, which is a big change. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and they put computers in prisons, and so I designed some software with them. I'm a skate leader. I like mapping. Um, I'm an ambassador for Open Knowledge Australia. Um, and I'm now fun employed and into security and privacy and all this jazz. And so that's, that's me. Um, so OpenStreetMap. What's OpenStreetMap? Uh, this, is, uh, this is the OpenStreetMap homepage um, where you can you know, see a map kind of similar to what you would see on Google Maps. Um, it's, you know... It's a map. It's nothing really fancy yet. Uh, this is also OpenStreetMap. This is a mobile application called uh, Osmand, which is avail available for Android. Um, and it does a whole swathe of mappy stuff for Android. It, if, if you need to do it, you can probably do it with Osmand. It'll do um, trip routing, um, map display, turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation, um, GPS recording, the whole, the whole works. It'll do it. Um, this is a, a, new, a different view of OpenStreetMap. So this is using some different map tiles. So to change the, uh, to, just to change the display of, of the, the, the same mapping data. Um, this is done by mapbox.com. Uh, and it's being displayed using leaflet.js, which is a JavaScript library for displaying maps in web pages. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is another view of OpenStreetMap. Uh, you can't find this at Hipster Melbourne anymore because these map tiles are gone. Um, I'm, hoping to find some time in my copious free unemployment time to maybe recreate it. But basically, we did, as Open Knowledge, uh, we did a few nights where we said, oh, what's a crazy project that we can do? And what we, just, what we decided was, hey, let's, let's create a hipster map, you know, a map of places where hipsters might want to go to. And then the places won't be hipster anymore, and the hipsters won't go to them anymore. And so it'll be, it'll be, it'll be a riot. It'll be great. Um, and so we made this map using OpenStreetMap data. It was mostly Steve who did this, who spoke earlier. Um, this was his, his baby. Um, and so some of the features of this map, for example, were that uh, you can see, you, you maybe can't see, in fact, uh, there are some gray lines, really difficult to read gray lines on the, uh, on this disgusting color, so you can see some, some lines here. Uh, those are the, um, those are the alleyways in, in Melbourne, um, and the, the slightly heavier lines are the, the main roads. Um, if you weren't zoomed in this far, if you were zoomed out as one zoom level, you could only see the, um, uh, the, the alleyways. You couldn't see the main roads because what hipster would use a main road? So, you know, that's useless information. Let's throw that away. Uh, and we put a whole lot of data on top of that. But, you know, so we, we basically themed this map from scratch using OpenStreetMap data and said, show this, don't show that, show these at this zoom level, that kind of thing. Um, this is also OpenStreetMap. This is the uh, raw XML data of an OpenStreetMap object. This is the um, uh, State Library of Victoria. Uh, and so you can see here it's got information about its geographical location, uh, you know, friendly names, the facts, machine number, languages, uh, the name in different languages, phone number, website, the whole works. And so that information can be, you know, is associated with this ID here, which is unique. Uh, and it's also got the change set, which, because OpenStreetMap, OpenStreetMap is all version controlled, 
so you can see you know, what version this, you know, what version of OpenStreetMP you're looking at. Um, so that's pretty cool too. Um, but that doesn't really tell you a whole lot of information. So OpenStreetMap is hosted at OpenStreetMap.org. It can be likened, it can be described as the Wikipedia of Google Maps. It's, you know, it's a mapping application or, or a mapping infrastructure, but it, like Wikipedia, it's user contributed. Um, and so if, you know, if you want to fix something, you fix it. You know, if something's not right, go and change it yourself. Uh, if your area isn't mapped out, go forth and map it. Um, it's worldwide. It's completely user contributed. You can occasionally you might get corporations or, or big organisations that might say, "Hey, we've got a whole lot of data that we want to upload," and then that can kind of get coordinated by methods that I don't fully pretend to understand. Um, and mostly, it's unrestricted use. It's it, they used to use a Creative Commons license. They now use the like, OpenStreetMap license, which is a bit different. I haven't gone and looked in great detail about the change to licensing, but fundamentally, it's an open license, so you can do you're pretty free to do what you like with it. Um, so you can use it for trip routing, offline smartphone access. Uh, you can store maps on your handheld GPS, whether that's your phone or uh, like a, a Garmin GPS that you might buy, or um, I think in some, in some cases you can use it for you know, a TomTom or a um, Navman as well. Some of those uh, can be flashed to support it. You can build custom map tiles like we did for the hipster map earlier. Um, so you can lay it out the way you like. And you can build some pretty advanced mapping websites. Um, so as I said before, if your area isn't very well mapped or um, you want to you know, fix a couple of features, you can go and fix it yourself. This is um, ID, which is an uh, HTML5 web-based editor for OpenStreetMap. It's integrated with their website, OpenStreetMap.org. Uh, basically, you hit the edit button at the top left-hand side of the website. Um, it'll have you sign in with an account that you can create um, freely. Uh, and you can go and edit the data. Here, we're again editing the State Library of Victoria's data and having a look at all of the um, uh, the metadata that they've got on that and each, um, each tag that's available. So you can go and change one of those without too much trouble. And then you hit save and it'll prompt you to uh, label your change request, you know, rename to the state library to you know, something else or whatever. Again, you can um, use a handheld GPS. So if you go for a walk on a, a walking track that hasn't been around for long or that nobody's walked on before or that nobody's mapped, you can record your GPX of your walking track and go for one with that, and then you can upload the GPX file to OpenStreetMap.org, and it'll overlay it, it'll underlay it on, on an editable version of OpenStreetMap, so you can then trace that with, um, with the OpenStreetMap tools and say, oh yeah, here is where the, the route is, and you can say, this is a, a walking track, and it's, you know, it's gravel, or it's, um, it's asphalt, or whatever, and you can go and add all of that information in and of course, the advantage of using a GPS trace is that you don't need to use satellite imagery or whatever, and it'll be rather more accurate. Um, you can do the same if you use an app on your smartphone. Again, Osmand can do this. Uh, there'll be plenty of others as well. Uh, that's the beauty of OpenStreetMap, is that anybody can write a tool that'll allow you to do that kind of thing. Um, and with Osmand, you can actually upload the GPS trace directly from the, from the app so that you, know, you can then go to your computer and say, oh, yeah, here is my account, and it's already uploaded, and I can go and do the edits from here without having to take it off the device separately. Um, another thing that you can do is um, you can update maps on paper. So uh, this was used heavily by, um, the, uh, by HOT, the humanitarian open street map team uh, in Indonesia, um, particularly in Jakarta, where they have a whole lot of, they haven't got a whole lot of technical infrastructure but it's really valuable for them to map, um, map the land, particularly when they've got uh, disaster areas, like you know, they have, have a flood, and they want to go and say, oh, which areas are flooded? So they'll print a whole lot of these out, and there's an index page that gets printed out as well so that you can see how they all fit together. And they'll go for a walk, and they'll say, oh, yeah, this, bit's, you know, that, this building's gone, or you know, this whole area is flooded out. Or um, you know, if you're doing something different, you might say, oh, these roads have changed, or this, there, there are, there's a line of shops that have been added down on the map, and you can draw those in. And then you can take the piece of paper back home, you can take a photo of it, or you can scan it. Uh, and then you can, and then what that'll do is you can upload that, and you've got these little positioning dots around the edges, around each, each of the four corners, the three corners. Uh, and then there's the QR code down in the bottom corner, uh, which together it will use to work out where the map 
lives on the, in the world, and it'll again underlay that over an editable version of, of OpenStreetMap, so you can trace, you can you electronically trace your handwritten scrawl to upload them to update the map. And I did this with my scouts uh, as an activity, and you know, it took them half an hour or so to go for a walk and add some features in, and we came back, and you know, they went and edited it. And it's not it's not a difficult thing to do. It's really quite really quite straightforward. Um, again, as I said before, you can use custom map tiles. These are some various different tiles that are available. Um, on the left, on the top left here, uh, is it gonna let me show that? Yeah, so uh, this is from, from MapQuest. So MapQuest is another website that uses OpenStreetMap data and they create their own tiles. Um, this is the humer humanitarian version of the map. And the, the point of these is a, a, that they focus on different bits of data. So they, um, MapQuest, for example, you can see has got a whole lot more information about these buildings. So this, what we're looking at here is uh, RMIT, uh, the university, and you can see that they've got a whole lot of focus on, look, these are the building numbers for RMIT. Um, and over here, I think this is the transport map, so it's got things like train and bus and tram routes. Uh, this is, what's this one? This is a cycle map, so it's got, you know, bike lanes and uh, what, cycling tracks and whatever. Uh, this is the classic OpenStreetMap standard format. And over here on the right is a site that Steve Bennett, who you saw earlier, um, spoke about, um, designed, and it's called cycletour.org, and it's his version of a map that is good for cycling, and it's got trip routing and whatever, only in Victoria at the moment. Um, but he's focused, again, on um, information that is useful to cyclists as opposed to you know people who are driving or walking. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you've got arbitrary attributes here, about a particular uh, node or uh, polygon or whatever. So each of these things for the state library can be, you know, you can call them whatever you like. You know, here's the key. You can give that, you can create a key of whatever name you like. And the way this works is that um, kind of people have created de facto standards for, you know, oh, okay, you know, the postcode, we'll, we'll call the postcode adder colon postcode. And because, you know, people have kind of standardized on that kind of thing all on their own, it means that you can then go and use that information in the search later on. So show me things with postcode 300 or whatever. Um, but you can, you know, if there's a new bit of information that you haven't come across before, you can, you know, pick a name for it and use that attribute name and just go ahead and put it there. And then also document it on the OpenStreetMap wiki, for example, so that people know that that's what it means and can go and look it up and start using it themselves. Uh, so it's, it's quite flexible in that way. Um, so tile mill. Uh, Timel is um, a little bit obsolete now, but it's still it's still usable. Um, Timel is a product by Mapbox, um, who do a whole lot of mapping stuff, um, and it's two generations old now. But basically, what it does is it lets you design your own map tiles. So you can say, all right, I'd like to show um, uh, freeways in bright green, and um, if I'm at zoom level greater than 12, then I'd like you to show small streets in a light gray color. And if it's a cycle, if it's a cycle way, then I can make it green, um, show the water, the water in blue, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you can go and use basically a CSS type thing, they call it Carto CSS, to style a map, you know, pull up data from OpenStreetMap, or indeed a CSV or a JSON file, or, um, a, or particularly GeoJSON, which has got you know, a bit of infrastructure around JSON to show geographic information. And just say format it like this, and then you can export those tiles and display them as a on a web page. Um, superseding Tileman now, they've got um, Mapbox Studio Classic and Mapbox Studio, which is a new one, which is all all web based, and I haven't played around with that yet. Uh, CartoDB is another one, which um, is designed for not usually editing the map itself, but for displaying stuff on top of it. So you can display a whole lot of points on it, or you can, you know, aggregate points together, or color parts of it to say, you know, you can create a heat map and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this is notionally open source, um, but I've never gotten a, a local install of it working. It's, it's a little bit um, painful. Uh, but you can, you can create a free account and use it on the website, but it's free as in beer, not free as in speech. Uh, so why is this better than Google Maps? Well, Google Maps are more likely to track you. You can't export large segments of map data, whereas with OpenStreetMap, you can go to the website and say, give me, you know, give me all of Melbourne. Uh, sometimes I'll say, no, nah, it's too large. Um, but you can 
download a full export from one of their um, mirrors and import and you know then cut it out yourself. Um, so they do have some limitations if you try to do it at, at too high resolution, just because they are not for profit and they don't have that much computing power. But there are ways for you to get it, get all the information that you want free. Um, you you can I think now store open uh, Google data on your GPS, but I think it's only a recent addition. So I think Google Maps now lets you have a local copy of, open, of Google data, but that's quite new, and I don't know how functional it is. Uh, as far as I know, you can't create custom map tiles, and it's restricted for use on websites, so you've got to usually get a, a license or an API key to be able to use it. Um, they've got an editor, but from what I've heard, it's difficult to get an edit approved. Somebody, you know, it's often got to be re um, reviewed by a trusted reviewer um, who may or may not decide that they like it. Uh, and so you're basically doing work for Google as well, and, and not necessarily giving back to the community, which is probably what you'd prefer to be doing. It's certainly what I'd, be, I'd prefer to be doing. Um, so this is actually a shorter talk um, than I'd remembered. And the, the reason I did that was because um, there's plenty of time for demos. So I can demonstrate some of these tools, if you like, um, or you, know, you can ask me some questions. So are there any questions that people have got right off the bat? Do you want to? I'll, I'll grab this, but in the meantime, if you like, you can shout one out and I can repeat it. Do you want to? Yeah, so <coughs> Thank you. Um, so you said initially it was underappreciated um, at the very beginning of your talk. What do you think would motivate people to use uh, um, OpenStreetMap over the traditional software they usually use? I think, I think part of the problem is just um, marketing. Um, certainly, as with a lot of open source tools, usability is occasionally an issue. Um, certainly, Osmand um, has had a history of being particularly difficult to use. Uh, so that's the mobile app that I use on my phone. The user interface was very crowded um, because it was doing a lot of stuff, and it was just difficult to find the things that, things that you were looking for. They've gotten a lot better. The UI is a lot easier to use now. Um, but it could still get a little bit better. Um, and because there are so many different tools available, it's like, which one do I pick? How do I, you know, how do I choose this one over that one? And do I really care? Do I have the time to invest in this open source tool? And is it worth the benefit that I'm going to get of not using a Google tool or whatever? Um, so I think outreach is probably a big thing, and I'm not really sure how to do that yet. Um, but certainly, you know, writing blog posts and you know telling people about it and saying, hey, look, here's this thing, you know, and it's one of the things that I do. I say, look, look at this, you know. Um, a perfect example is uh, if I'm at a scout camp and I'll find that oh, this scout camp, the map, there's no map for this scout camp on, on Google Maps, and I'll pull up OpenStreetMap and there's a, there's a pretty good chance that it'll be there because somebody has said, oh, you know, the, I walk around the scout camp fairly often, I'll map it out, and I, I mean, I've done. I think three of them myself, and it only takes, once you actually walk around the, um, the park and get the GPS trace, it only takes you about 20 minutes to get something usable on OpenStreetMap, like that you can upload and say, here, here is, here is a layout of the land. So I think OpenStreetMap has an advantage over Google Maps in that instance where Google don't necessarily see it as um, cost effective for them to go and map that data out, whereas somebody might say, you know, I, did, I use this data, so I will go and take, on, take it on myself to go and do that. Does that kind of answer your question? Cool. Is there another question over here? Hi, thanks for the talk. I just wondered, is there a way to store ephemeral data in the maps, like perhaps location of uh, sightings of animals or uh, something which is time sensitive. So you might not want to know it all the time, but you wanted to know at some point in time there was something there. Yeah, so that's, that's not really the ideal use case for OpenStreetMap itself. So in that case, what you'd probably do is you'd, you'd store that data yourself in your own PostGIS database or in a, JS a GeoJSON file or whatever. And then you would use something like TileMill to pull that data from your own data source and then overlay it on top of a custom OpenStreetMap layer that you know, 
So if, if, you, if, um, if I go to, uh, where is it? That's not what I want. If I go to, not that one, um, uh, bin map. There it is. Uh, so here, here's an example. Um, so this is the one that Steve used earlier. Um, we've got data for, um, uh, for, for when your bins are going to be collected in your, in your city council. So each of these bits of data will be pulled from the various city councils, and I've got, they've got all the data sources up here. Um, and what Steve's done is if I zoom in, and this, is, this website's got a really huge banner at the top, which frustrates me just a little bit, but anyway, um, it doesn't have a whole lot of information about, you know, it doesn't necessarily have a whole lot of street names at most zoom levels. So that he's used a custom map tile layout to say, you know, let's just gray out as much of the information as we, as we can because we don't care about it. And then on top of that, I'll create various layers that are using my own data sources to show you the, the information that you care about. So, you know, you can go and hide certain layers. Um, you can, you know, change the layout. And so most of this data, a lot, all these, these uh, council, city council polygons are being stored somewhere else and it's just pulling um, the map data underneath from OpenStreetMap and, and then displaying it in a way that's unobtrusive. Does that answer that? Cool. Anybody else? Anybody want to show you, show you some mapping tools like uh, the creating tiles or whatever? Yeah, cool. All right, I'll see if I can pull this up. Um, how good am I? Um, You want some JavaScript too. There you go. Okay, that will probably do. No, okay, that one as well. Sure, whatever. This is fine. All right, cool. Uh, I can't move that over. That's lovely. All right, so what we've got over here is a map of uh, the CBD of Melbourne and its surrounding suburbs. So, as an example, I can go and Change, uh, where are we? Where's big roads, there it is. Um, so I can make that blue. And then I can save it. And so I can go and pretty simply go and style a particular object. And I can make them rather larger if I think that they're particularly important. Um, I don't. So let's make them a little bit smaller, and you can go and change the layer underneath. So I think that the background color is currently light yellow. Let's make it gray. Um, and I can, you can hide information completely. Uh, so if I didn't have, um, so over here we've got our list of layers. So each of these layers either comes from an OpenStreetMap export, which is stored in PostGIS, um, which is the, post, uh, the, the GIS extension for, for PostGIS. Um, or it's stored in a CSV or a, um, a JSON file. So if I look at big roads, for example, uh, we can see it's pulling data from uh, gist.researchmaps.net um, with all the auth details in the clear. That's lovely. Um, and it's got you know a selection here that's got show me the highways where where their type is motorway or trunk, and it's pulling that information and then it's giving it the CSS class name of big roads, which I can then go and style the way I like. Uh, over here, for example, we've got um, a, oh, it's a KML file. All right, so this is a KML file that we pulled presumably from data.gov.au or wherever that's got the locations of police stations, uh, and those are being displayed in a certain style as well. Uh, and then these little um, orange dots are the locations of Skyhooks concerts um, in a CSV. Um, so, you know, you can, you can go and pull any of that information in, and let's have a look at that. Um, so you can see each has got a UID. Oh, dear. That's not the expected result. Too many fingers. Try that again. Skyhooks. Um, and, oh, yeah, there we go. Cool. So I can go over here, and you can, you can see where, where the concert was. And eventually, I will get to... The latitude and longitude. So that's just data that's sitting in the CSV, and I can tell it how to pull that data out, and it'll work it out, and I can go and style it the way I like. Um, this 
has changed with the newer versions of the tools that Mapbox have released. I believe they've done away with uh, the CSS styling and it's much more point and clicky now, but as I said, I haven't played around with it much. Um, but either way, it, it does show you that it's pretty powerful for you to be able to say, you know, and this is, this is one, of the, one of the big benefits, I think, of OpenStreetMap over uh, Google Maps in that cartography makes map data a lot more useful. You can say, you know, I really don't care about anything except main roads, or I really don't care about anything except bodies of water. And you can get rid of a whole lot of data that is irrelevant to the point that you're trying to get across so that, um, so that, the, the, so that it's clear and easy to use. Um, what else can I show you? Um, I'll have a quick demo of Leaflet. Leaflet.js. Um, so Leaflet.js, I've got a whole lot of examples of how to do various stuff to display maps. Um, so, you know, you can create a circle, you can create a, a triangle, a polygon, you can create a point, uh, and you can do all of this stuff dynamically. Um, I used Leaflet for one of my GovHack projects a couple of years ago. If I can remember the URL for it. There it is. Um, this is probably going to do something strange. Might put me in a weird spot. Yes, that, that's lovely. In fact, that actually worked quite well, but there's nothing interesting there. Um, so my project was about um, showing stuff that was accessible within uh, like the accessibility rating of buildings and, and paths and whatever within Melbourne. Um, so we took um, some City of Melbourne data about the inclination of, main, of roads and paths within Melbourne. And you can see the, the green roads. Uh, so this, sorry, we've got, this is a, a tile layer on top of the map. Um, the, the green roads are quite flat and the red roads are quite steep. Um, and underneath it, we've just got a, a regular open street map. map. Uh, somewhere here, I can't see it. Maybe it's because uh, there is supposed to be a little um, selection box on this map, and I don't know where it's gone, that lets you show um, the ratings of buildings, and it's got a whole lot of pins that get dropped to say, these buildings are rating level three, which means that they are accessible by wheelchairs, and uh, these buildings are rating level one, which means that you, you basically need to be able to walk to get into them. Um, I really don't know where that's going, which is a bit disappointing, but that's stuff that gets displayed on top of OpenStreetMap, and that's all happening in JavaScript within the browser. Um, so you can do that kind of thing as well. Um, what else can we do with Leaflet? And that, actually, that's basically, you know, if you have a look at the Leaflet website, that's, there's a whole lot of information there. And my main point of this talk is to just show you a bit of a taste of the kind of stuff that you can do because a lot of this stuff isn't really all that difficult, particularly if, if you've got any JavaScript experience, if you want to create a website, it's not hard to do. I mean, I, I learned Leaflet in a weekend so that I could do it for a, for a GitHub project. Um, so it's not all that painful. Um, does anybody have anybody, anything else that they'd like to ask or comment on? Yep. Don't do that. I was just going to make a mention for QGIS. Oh, yep. If you're really into this, oh, you can mention it. Yeah. So there are several desktop-based editing tools for mapping. Um, QGIS is one of them. Um, I haven't used it much myself. It sounded um, a little bit difficult for me to get, get my head around, but I, didn't, I admit I didn't spend much time on it. So there's QGIS. There's also Jossum, the Java-based OpenStreetMap editor. Um, I'm sure there's at least one other one, but it escapes me. But yeah, QGIS is really good for, as I understand, for things like creating polygons and, and editing, editing OpenStreetMap, but also creating stuff that you can overlay on top of it. And it's, it's a pretty powerful open source tool for that kind of thing. Um, and then, again, this is one of the things I like, is that is, and it's a, it's a bit of a blessing and a curse. There are so many tools that you can use. You're likely to find one, that'll, at least one that'll do what you want, but you might have to do quite a bit of looking to find it. Uh, and you know, if you just want to do something simple, it's like, ah, which one do I pick? I don't know. Um, so yeah, that, that's you know, that's a bit of a bit of a tricky one. So yeah, that is my talk. Thank you very much. Um, this talk is all Creative Commons. It's on that website up there. Um, by all means, have a look. And thank you all for coming. <laughs>